Hi everyone, welcome back to another tutorial with Mike Wash Paint. Today we're going to paint something really cool. I have been really into tropical plants lately and I don't really paint them all that often. So I wanted to do something a little bit different. I was looking through this flower color guide. I love this book. It has all your different flowers in different colors and it's a really nice book for references when you're looking for something to paint. And I came across um, this bird of paradise. And I have gotten comments before about wanting to paint more birds of paradise and, and just show how to maybe paint them. So I thought today was gonna be a perfect day to paint some bird of paradise. So what we're gonna do is paint a nice, lovely colored background and have just a couple different birds of paradise coming up right here and thought this would be a great reference photo to use from this book. So to get started, we're gonna need a few things here. So um, I have my aqua hot press from uh, the Stonehenge aqua hot press from Legion paper. This is 140 pound, so it has a nice weight to it. It's acid free, so you're not gonna see it yellow over time if you're, you're caring to maybe frame this or put it in a museum one day. Um, I also, it's also 100% cotton and it comes about with uh, 15 sheets. The paper has a nice thickness to it, so it's not really gonna warp on you. That's why it's really great with your gouache. Um, pick yourself up some hot press paper if you're gonna use gouache, I recommend it highly. You definitely can use the cold press, but you're just gonna find it a little bit difficult to um, paint. So we have some colors here. I'm using Holbein Artist's gouache. It's a traditional gouache, so it will reactivate when you're painting. I have a permanent white. This is what I like to use for my white color. I have an ivory black, an iris, which is a nice lovely shade of purple. And I'm gonna be using that right here for some of these petals. I have a permanent yellow orange for some of the orange petals here. I have an emerald green. This is what I chose to use for my stalks of the Birds of Paradise. I think this is gonna be a lovely shade for uh, tropical plants. I have a cadmium yellow possibly to lighten up with the permanent ye uh, yellow orange, just to create a little bit more depth. And for my background color, I chose cobalt turquoise. I think this is gonna be a really rad color um, with this emerald green. It's gonna be a little bit more blue than turquoise green. And I just thought it was gonna be a rad color. Now you can use any background color you choose. For this, I am using Winsor & Newton Series 7 brushes. These are a little bit more expensive. You can use um, anything that uh, you have around the house, possibly any watercolor brushes that you have. Uh, I also recommend using these Princeton Heritage br brushes. They're synthetic sable, so they're a little bit um, on the, not cheaper side, but they're a little bit more inexpensive. And uh, they're, they're very, very good for, for the quality that you get out of these. Um, they hold up with gouache very nicely and watercolor paints. So you could just check those out. But right now I have just my Series 7 brushes. I have a round number five that you can use. I have a round number three, which is a little bit smaller than the five. I have a round two, which is smaller than your three. I have a round number one, just for a little bit more of the detail. Possibly you get some of this purple stock, uh, purple petals going or any detail. And then I also have a round zero. So this is going to be for any more fine detail, possibly using on these stocks. So pick yourself up some nice watercolor brushes and then we're gonna need a palette, right? So uh, right here I have a butcher's pan. This is what I like to use because they're a little bit heavier. So when you're painting, it's not moving all over the place. So when you're mixing that paint, it stays really nice and stationary. That's why I really like to use it. It's just really heavy. It uh, collects the paint um, over time really nicely. I leave it here because it reactivates and I, I just, love this pan so much. I've had it for three years now and you can just see how much of the paint has built over, up over time. I never like to take it off, never like to clean it. It's just something that has stuck with me. If you don't wanna get a butcher's pan, you can also get one of these plastic pallets. Um, I don't typically like to use these that often because you can see some of the um, gouache flakes off the uh, plastic palette a little bit over time. But these are great because they're very inexpensive. They're about $1 from your art store. And um, I like to use them when I'm doing more, uh, uh, using a specific color where I can get a lot of shades out of it. I like to experiment with different colors. So these are very nice just to have around your house. 
But um, if you're looking for something, I definitely recommend the butcher's pan. It goes for about 10 to $15 from your art store and it's gonna last you forever. We also want two cups of water. So I got um, two cups of water for washing my brushes off. My painting, I like to use one jar to wash off the initial pigment. And then I use the second jar to wash off any more of that uh, pigment, just to get it a lot extra clean. Cause you're gonna see that your first jar get really dirty over time. And I like to use as clean of water I can use when I'm mix mixing my gouache. So that's, that's one reason I really like to have a cleaner uh, water cup next to me while painting. And the last thing you're really gonna need is um, some type of paper towel. So right here, I have a couple napkins um, just to wash off my brush uh, or, or dry my brush after I wash it. So um, you're just gonna need these things and then we can get started. All right, to get started, I, I usually like to just give myself a opportunity to put some pencil to paper and figure out where these birds of paradise are actually gonna go on my paper. So do yourself a favor, do a little bit of sketching to get a sense of where these birds of paradise are actually gonna go. I think I'm gonna make one more right here. All right, now that I loosely drew my birds of paradise and know where they're gonna go, I'm gonna do the background kind of like just around these little pieces. That way I'm gonna leave them very paper white around that. I am probably gonna paint where the petals are gonna be. I like to get a little bit more than I probably might use. It's always best to have uh, too much than too little, especially when you're doing a full background. That way you don't have to come back in and try to figure out <laughs> your, your background color again. I like to put a little bit of permanent white into my backgrounds just to really make them bright and vivid. And go right on in and get that mixture going. Start here. I like to brush out any little bubbles that might happen. If you ever see little bubbles in your painting, it's okay with gouache because they're just gonna like pop over time. Uh, it does leave a nice little texture to your painting. It's not a big deal, don't worry about it. You're not doing anything wrong. Although some people might think you're doing something wrong, but it's art, right? So art's just fun, we're just having fun. We're learning, we're experimenting. Don't put too much pressure on yourself to make it absolutely perfect. There's plenty of paintings in museums that are far from perfect, right? So don't be too hard on yourself if you're not getting the right consistency right off the bat. Okay, now that the background is dry, uh, I decided to use my emerald green for these nice birds of paradise stalks. And I also decided to use the plastic painter's palette for this. Start off, I'm gonna put a little bit of this emerald green right here in my painter's palette. I'm gonna use a little bit of permanent white right now, but not a lot. I just wanna bump this up a little bit. Get a little bit of your water. Awesome, okay. And now I'm going to start with this far side. Take that nice little edge of your brush. So I decided to make this one a little bit darker. So I'm gonna use a little bit of my ivory black. And you take it from the black pan that I put it in. 
and then start mixing it into a separate pan. For this, I'm using my um, Windsor & Newton round three. Round two actually might work really nicely as well. I actually think this round three is a little bit thick for this. Alright, to do this last piece, I'm going to use some of the green that we already have going and use a little bit of permanent white to brighten it up. And come back in here. Okay, now that we have all of our um, three stalks and the uh, colors have dried, we can go in and do some of these petals of the Birds of Paradise. And to begin that, I'm going to start off with a little bit of this permanent yellow orange. I'm going to continue using this painter's palette, the plastic one. For this, I'm going to use um, the Windsor & Newton round two. So if you have a round one or a round two, start from this end. By pushing down and then bringing your brush back up, you get a little bit of this um, width of the petal. And that's what I, I really like. Now I'm going to, I can faintly see some of my pencil strokes, which is nice because they help guide me. Um, Okay, now that the petals have dried, I'm gonna come in and use some of this iris color to get some of that kind of purpley petal color that Birds of Paradise have. So I'm just gonna put it right here on my palette. A little bit of permanent white, just to bump up the color a little bit. You could just use straight up purple if you have it. And I'm gonna use my round one for this. Um, I felt like that number two was just a little too wide. Petals. Okay, now that we have these um, purple petals drying, I decided to come in and use a little bit of cadmium yellow to come up off of these stalks and do a little bit of these highlights. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna come in, we're gonna put a little bit of yellow here right now. Right here in my painter's pan. So I'm just gonna come in here, mix up that yellow. I'm also gonna add a little bit of our emerald green into this. We don't want it completely yellow. We just wanna brighten up that green 
We want this to be a nice yellow green. So starting right here. yellow on top of that. Now to give this a little bit more added depth, I decided I'm going to use a darker shade of that emerald green and just come on the opposite side of these. So if the sun was hitting this side, we'd have the shadow or the darker side of these stalks kind of hitting on this side. So we're just gonna add a little bit of that added depth by just using some of the emerald green. I'm gonna come back in here, put it in my painter's pan. Some water going. Now we can add a little bit more depth to these other petals. So I'm gonna come back in with my permanent yellow orange and I'm gonna use some right here on my palette. If you wish to darken your orange up, you can use a tiny, tiny bit of black. I'm gonna come on the opposite side of this one. Okay, to continue this trend of creating depth with our petals, we're gonna add the darker part of this iris. So I'm gonna put a little bit here on my palette. Now I had already brightened this up earlier, so I don't need to darken this iris color, but if you need a darker iris color, just add a little bit of black to it. All right, for our final color, we're gonna use some permanent white. That's because I see on this, we have a little bit of white come off of these petals. I'm just gonna add a little bit of detail there and uh, round one, or round zero, sorry. You could use your round one, certainly.
top of here. And add a little white at the end of this tip. A little bit of white. All right, there we go. We just finished our lovely Birds of Paradise gouache painting. To finish us off, so why don't you sign it down here or even or in the left corner or right corner. I personally like the right corner, but yeah, just put your little signature there, put your initials, your full name, depends on whatever your signature is, but have fun with it. And then you can put it on the wall, give it to a friend, or just keep it for yourself to hang in a museum one day. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you for joining me today. If you paint any of these, please share with me on Instagram at Bolter Design Co. or right here on YouTube. If you'd like, you can join me on Facebook at Bolter Design Co. and share images with me in, um, on there. Or just, yeah, hit me up on Instagram at Bolter Design Co. Um, throw it at me in the DMs or tag me. I'd love to check it out. Um, anyways, see you on the next tutorial. I hope you had fun with this one.